I spent a lot of time about a year and a half ago producing live streams. I would put maybe 10, 15, 20 hours just putting together one live stream so that it would be as addictive as coffee and chocolate, you know? And unfortunately, after the live stream it was finished and I made the video available for others to see, the numbers didn't come in. The people just didn't have interest in it. And I think it's because I was putting all my energy into making all the bells and whistles, the sound effects, you know, the motion, all the, you know, green screen effects, all that stuff, and not focusing on what's really important, and that's producing valuable information or combining the two in an effective way. So after looking at the numbers after several months and years of doing it, I, I just got disappointed because I have limited time. I've got, I'm a track coach. I'm running my own business. I'm producing these videos, and I just can't justify pouring in all the time and effort into something that doesn't have a return. But let me tell you, the discovery of this plugin, Move Transitions, has changed my perspective on things because this software can do all the graphic heavy lifting for me, allowing me to focus on what's important, which is the value. And so it would be fantastic if you also understood how to leverage this plugin for your own live streams to do the same stuff so that you too can focus on what's important, which is the value. So in this tutorial, we're gonna discuss move transitions and how you can independently move each source within a scene so that when you go from scene one to scene two, each source moves independently to provide some legitimate visual excitement in your live stream so that you can focus on what's really important, and that's the value. Let's get some. <clears throat> Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. The Move Transition plugin is extremely easy to install, but if you'd like some extra help on knowing where to download the plugin and install it, you can go to this video right here. It's my first video on the plugin. It is fully compatible with PC, Macintosh, and Linux computers. In the previous tutorial, what we discussed was what would happen between two scenes with different sources inside of them and how the move transition plugin would affect them. Now what we're going to discuss is if we have two scenes with the same source, but what we're gonna do is adjust the position from one scene to the next. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We have two scenes here, scene nine and 10. I'm gonna go and hit the plus sign under scene nine and select image, add existing, because I already have one here that I wanna use. I'll hit cat 02, hit okay. And there he is. I think this photo is really funny. Then we'll go to scene 10 and add the same source. Hit the plus, image, add existing, cat two. Hit okay. And it adds the cat, all right? So we'll put the cat head over here just to show you what happens when I click back to scene nine. See what it does? Here, I'll click out of it so that it's not highlighted. It moves it based on where it is in the current scene, but each scene contains the same source. Now, this gets real interesting when we move the source off the frame, out of view. So when I go to scene nine, it appears, and when I go to scene 10, it moves off and out of view. That's what you see when I show you the demonstration here between rocket one scene which shows you all this cool stuff. And then I go to Rocket 2, all the sources in Rocket 2 reside in Rocket 1, but they're out of view, watch. Some new stuff comes in, what's happening now comes in, we've got the scrolling news text that comes in. These sources do exist in Rocket 1, but they're out of view, that's the key you're actually designing for two. You just need to keep track of where the sources reside for the multiple scenes. In the previous video that I've created, I said that Exeldro, who is the programmer for the Move Transitions, is next level. He has accounted for every conceivable need that you may have when moving sources inside of scenes. I'm gonna to prove to you what I mean by this right now. If you go to the Scene Transitions pull-down area and you select one of your created Move transitions, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to this video right here. I made a very clear and concise and easy to digest tutorial on how to do it. Select one of your move transitions and go to the gear and go to properties. And there's this thing called match if the source name 
and then it's what's checked off here contains the other source name that's what i just showed you with two duplicate sources in two different scenes right and we adjusted the position now if i click with numbers removed from end matches the other source name what does that mean it means that you can move two different sources in two scenes okay let me show you what i'm talking about so in this tutorial we have a scene called scene 9 with a image source named cat01 it's the funky cat with long ears and in scene 10 we have another image source that is different that is named cat02 it's a winking cat so what the selection does is it removes the numbers at the end and treats them as if the two sources are the same thing because when you remove the numbers the names are the same that's the solution so if you go back into the OBS plugin here and we look at what it says it says match if the source name with numbers removed from end matches the other source name that's what it means and if we go into the demonstration I'll hit OK to this and when I click scene 9 and then go to scene 10 it not only moves but fades into the other image see how that works isn't that cool so awesome so really if you go back into the properties here You'll notice it has a third choice, which would, which means match if the source name with the last word is removed matches the other source name. So it's really best to check all three because it gives you more flexibility in regards to making the matches occur based on the numbers or the name used at the end of the source name. So just check all three off and you can choose how you want the match to occur. Okay, real quick, if we go back into the gear and go to properties, I wanna make sure that you see here that there is a matched items set of parameters. One is easing, you have the ability to set sort of the smooth effect on how the transition occurs. You can choose these easy functions. You can add more uh, layered transitions on top of that motion as well. I like to put fade in there, that makes it real nice. Uh, transition scale type, read out those. The bottom line is I wanna make sure that you understand that that kind of control is there for you. Have fun playing with it. I know I've had fun with it. You should play and understand how it works by experimentation. Now in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into applying a move transition override to a source via a filter. So if I right click on it, select filters, hit the plus sign right here. There is a move transition override that you can apply to the source and add a hotkey to it. So if you're interested in learning this, which opens up the doors to making some really cool effects in OBS, you can follow me right here. I'll catch you over there. Stay strong and keep fighting. Get some.